Brand new Horus cards are coming later this month in Age of Overlord, the second new set for Yu-Gi-Oh! Series 12. There are six brand new cards coming and they actually look to be pretty interesting. They've seen some engine play in the OCG, but nothing seems to be topping tournaments using them as vanilla. But let's see what happens when we play them as vanilla as possible over the course of 30 duels. So let's get into the cards. There are four monsters, a new spell and a new trap, both of which are continuous. The new Horus cards are basically a reboot for the archetype, based around the King's Sarcophagus, rather than the OG Level Horus, Dark Horus or Metaphys Horus. Your main strategy is going to be using King Sarcophagus as a 4 per turn foolish burial, with the cost of discarding one card. Then the four new monsters have the ability to special summon themselves. Your opponent will then have to decide what to remove, because each new monster has an ability that triggers when a card is removed from the field. Starting us off, King Sarcophagus. This is a continuous spell that has three effects. Up to four times per turn, you can discard one card and send one card from your deck to the graveyard. If you have any Horus monsters in hand, they're the best target as well as Canopic Protection. When on the field, it'll protect your Horus monsters from destruction unless they target them. This funnels your opponent into single removal and blocks things like Lightning Storm and Rageki. Lastly, if a Horus monster battles, you can send the monster that it battles to the graveyard. This is non-targeting and non-destruction, so it'll bypass both those protections. Canopic protection is super simple. Once per chain, you can special summon a Horus monster from your hand or graveyard. And if it's in your graveyard, you can set it, so it's a free target for King Sarcophagus. Each of the four new monsters are based off Canopic Jars or the Sons of Horus. They all have the same summoning effect, allowing them to be special summoned if King Sarcophagus is on the field. Also, when a card is removed from your side of the field, be it sent, destroyed, banished, returned or super polyed, the effect will activate. Imseti is the first and has two effects. Firstly, if it's in your hand, you can discard it and one other card to add King Sarcophagus to your hand. Then you can draw one card. You basically get your own engine and a draw, either going equal or getting a Horus card in the graveyard for free. The other card effect, when a card is removed from your side of the field, allows you to send one card on the field to the graveyard. Quebus Senueth is next, based on the Hawk, and its trigger effect stops your opponent targeting Horus monsters with effects or in the battle phase. Now you can see why King Sarcophagus forces single removal. Duwama Mutev is based on the Jackal and has two effects. It gains 1200 attack for each Horus monster you control. Its trigger effect allows you to draw a card for each monster with a unique name that you have in your monster zones. Basically, if it triggers, you can draw up to 5. Lastly, Happy is based on the Baboon and will allow you to select 2 cards from the graveyard or banish zone and return them to the deck or add them to your hand. This includes your opponent's side too. For my list, I piled in a bunch of generic non-engine stuff to really give this deck some support. Droll, Ash and Perms are great, but Lava Golem slaps in this deck. Kaijus also work a treat. For my extra, I chose a load of generic rank 8 XZs, mainly Galaxy Eyes. This is a great engine for those cards. I also put Borrelens Dragon and Appaloosa as other generic cards. There's some negate support and some other techs in there. It's not necessary to win, it's just for some weird floodgates you might play against, and trust me, we did. The side deck is up to you, I added some generic support and floodgates. With that being said, let's get into the duels. Game 1 is against Trap Tricks. We go first and we draw the out. King Sarcophagus is activated, then ashed. No matter, Quebi is in the graveyard anyway. We can use it again and get Imseti in the graveyard. With draw and Canopic protection in hand, we'll set Canopic and pass. Our opponent summons the blue one and sets two. It's our turn and we ditch the droll after drawing skill drain to put Dwarma Mutef in the graveyard. Then we summon it. We have enough for lethal and go straight into the battle phase for an easy win. Game 2 and we go first again. The opponent surrenders as they didn't win the coin toss. This is pretty much all of us at some point. Duel 3 is us going first again, we're up against amazement and we get trash for going first. I summon inspector border and pass. They set 3 and pass. They switch to defense position to which they destroy border with dogmatica punishment and summon amazement assistant Delia. Then they go into the battle phase. Our turn, we have no cards, so we're deleting the back row of Lightning Storm, the opponent scoops. Game 4 is us going second, and the opponent has Beastial Resonators. I was against this combo in the last episode. So they end up on a nice board of Saranir, Disparta, Abyss, a token, and Beastial Labellion. Our hand is amazing. I use Pot of Extravagance to bait the Abyss, and the opponent takes this. Lightning Storm destroys the back row, and we have trade in as a draw engine. We manage to pop two off and get Quebe and Happy in the graveyard. 
then finish off by using Sarcophagus to get the other two in the graveyard. We'll delete the board leaving Lubellion. We'll go into Appaloosa to block them from recovering as this deck does that very well. They take the bait and go for the battle phase. Then we can start resurrecting Horus' guard, causing the opponent to scoop. Game 5 is against Kashtira Destina. They end with a Rise Heart and Shangra Era. Lava Golem wipes their board and with a Sarcophagus in hand, it's far too easy. We'll get Mseti, Kwebe, Duam Mutev in the graveyard, then use Dua and Kwebe to make Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord. We'll get rid of the Lava Golem and hit them for 2,500. They'll break out the Testina engine which we block, then they use Talon to grab our Photon Lord. Basically, they do some shit, but next turn we manage to summon back the Canopic Quad and go straight for lethal. Duel 6 is us going against the Boomer Supreme deck, Gaia and Blackluster Soldier. We set up a filthy board of King Sarcophagus, three guards with no happy, Lava Golem and another king is in our hand. Our opponent does the worst possible thing and lightning storms our sarcophagus. Quibbe and Dua both trigger, stopping our monsters from being destroyed and allowing me to draw three. This gives us two great hand traps. Droll is used after they search Guy the Magical Knight and Effect Failure will stop it from summoning back up. We'll trade in Lava Golem and then summon Happy and Quibbe with our remaining sarcophagus and that's game over. Jewel 7 is us going second, they play a searcher with us using Droll. They scoop. Again, everybody's probably done this at some point. Game 8 is Trap Tricks with us going first, ending on a board of Imseti, Dua and Quebe. They do a combo to end with Terribly Tired Tapir. They go to attack and is sent to the graveyard by King Sarcophagus. Do people not fucking read? Uh, stupid question from a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Game 9 is versus Exo Sister, which can be an issue. We get an end board of all four guards, Skill Drain and Kings. They do some Exo Sister shit and banish King Sarcophagus. That triggers all four effects, because if any card is removed from the field in almost any way, this will trigger. I get four cards, two from the graveyard, battle phase and card effect protection, and they lose a card. Our opponent realises they fucked up, and scoops. Jewel 10 is against a strange Lunar Light deck, with us going second. They set up an end board of Avramax, Lunar Light Dancer, and DMZ Dragon. I have a hand more disgusting than the pig's ass, and we'll smash this board to pieces. Lava Golem goes down and Imseti allows us to get kings, which they scoop. Amazing. Game 11 has his face off against Sword Soul. We get five of the guard on the field with Canopic Protection and kings. They do a really good job of blocking us because they negate Duwama Mutef, but even one negate is not enough. With no ability to break the board on turn one and me winding up for a second wave of summons, they scoop. Duel 12 is against Scareclaw Crash Tira, and we go second, breaking our winning streak as well. It was a really long duel, but I get hit with a negate and my cards are forced into defense mode by Tryheart. If people don't know yet, the best way to beat this deck is with cards like Skill Drain and Tryheart. Game 12 is against Labyrinth, with us going second. We actually brick this time, but summon Inspector Border. They, for some reason, surrender to this, I'm not really sure why. Duel 14 is us against Sky Striker, and we're going first with a dirty hand. We set up an end board with the four guards and King Sarcophagus. Our opponent lightning storms us and activates all four effects, with me being an absolute idiot, activating Inseti's effect and sending Happy to the graveyard. Nonetheless, we get four cards, Omni Protection, two cards back and, well, one less monster. The opponent runs the clock down like a little bitch. Game 15 is us versus Wind Witch going first. This time we end with the four guards and King Sarcophagus again, but this time we've also got Skill Drain. Their massive combo ends with Baron the Floor and they delete Inseti but I flip skill drain so they can't do their little negate thing. With four monsters on turn two and King Sarcophagus still in action, I can clean up the board with three reasonably powerful monsters. Duel 16 and we're first yet again. This time it's Mechanko Libromancer. We get the regular end board off with the four guards and King Sarcophagus. Again. This player was great and they knew the cards. They flipped Quebe face down and used Dua for their summon of Doombroker. They know not to use Oheim and just battle face for 2500 damage by attacking with Doombroker directly. We have a Lava Golem in hand and summon it to get rid of Oheim and Doombroker, getting our end board back. They steal Dua again and we have to wipe him out. After wiping the board, I'll overlay for Photon Lord for in the gate. They'll set and pass. We'll get the four guards plus an extra Imseti and that's game. This was a great player but we had far too much juice in the tank. Game 17 is Egyptian Gods vs Egyptian God. We're first and we're against the Winged Dragon of Ra. We get a tasty end board of four guards, King Sarcophagus, Canopic Protection and the Skill Drain. They manage to take out three of the guards by using Soul Crossing. This is one of the instances where the effects won't activate. 
with Chen Canopic Protection when Ra activates its effect to destroy Happy, which lets us get Imseti back. Imseti activates and sends Ra to the graveyard. Our opponent runs down the clock in a fit of rage. Duel 18 is Infernoid, and we go second... Uh, hang on. Just one second. Yeah, that should make it tolerable. To make a long story short, they do a big combo for reasons. They fail to read my card and lose. I had no idea what they were cooking. Game 19 was an instant surrender when the opponent loses the coin toss. Game 20 is us going first against the new Ubel. We get an okay end board, but they haven't got enough to one-shot us, partially because they don't read Sarcophagus. We clean up with Lava Golem, get happy in, and it's nighty night. Game 21 is against Ninja. We're first. We set up the classic end board, minus happy, and opt for Imperm instead. They Harpy Feather Duster our back row, and we pop off Imperm, then our three effects. They scoop. Duel 22 was an instant surrender when we get a nice end board and the opponent draws. I guess they didn't draw the out. Game 23 was against Branded Resonators. They go first and end with Scarred Dragon Archfiend, Crimson Gaia and Soul Resonator. They don't have enough to withstand my Lava Golem but do stop me from winning by removing Imseti from play. Even after tanking my hits, they summon Obsessive Overloop and Bone Archfiend. But it looks like they aren't running Abyss, which may have won them the game. They surrender after not being able to synchro summon. Duel 24 is against Vanquish Soul. They did a really good job of disruption, but liked removing my cards from the field, which stopped them from even scratching me. They surrender when I managed to use a second king sarcophagus. Duel 25 is against Ice Jade and Goatee, and we're going first. As usual, we have the four guards and king sarcophagus. They don't read the cards and trigger our effects. Turn 3 will see us recover and get an easy wipe. Game 26 was against Drytron, and we're going second. Our opponent starts with, oh, hang on, there we go, that's better. They go for a massive combo to end on Ammo Fact of Pain. We'll just Lava Golem it and we'll end with the four Sons of Horus. We can't battle because of Link Karibo, so we'll just pass. They do another combo, get Access Code Talker and Drytron Meteonis. They don't read because I bait the Meteonis after Access attacks. King Sarcophagus activates and they decide to destroy it, triggering my effects. Game 27 is second against Dogmatica, they end with Dogmatica Albazoa, rip the extra deck, but who cares. We get an easy 4 plus kings, they see that and surrender. Game 28 was Runic Plunder Patrol, they end with Blackbeard on turn 1. We have yet another stupid hand and blitz them, even stealing their merc with triple tactics talent. 4 Sons of Horus on the board is GG. Game 29, in my notes I've written that this was against an unskilled shitty floodgate. I'm going second and they set 3 and pass. Great. They start with Soul Levy, which mills 3 whenever I special summon, and grave for the Super Ancient Organism, which stops level 6 or higher special summoned monsters from attacking. Luckily, XEs aren't levels, so I'll pay the toll to get 4 guards, then overlay to get Cypher Dragon and Prime Photon Dragon. They remove my cards using Clockwork Knight and System Down. I'll still pay the toll and overlay for Heliopolis, destroy his cards, and go for Lethal. If I couldn't do that, I would have lost due to not being able to draw. Game 20 was going first against Heroes. Again, this was a super long match and I lost because I didn't read and ended up getting beaten by this tasty end board. Ironic, considering how many of these wins were from my opponents not reading. So, the results are actually looking fantastic. I won 28 times versus losing just twice in 30 duels. This is pretty staggering and should mean this is a tier 0 deck, right? Not really. I think the most important factors for these wins is luck, and our opponents not being familiar with the cards. Granted, in a tournament scenario, this is unlikely, but it still does happen. When I bricked, the opponent also seemed to brick too, although this deck is very consistent. What I love about this deck is how simple it is to play. It really is brain dead, no offense to anyone, and the wins come from your opponent struggling to break an end board, or you have so much generic non-engine availability that you have some amazing going second hands. Outside of this, the six new cards really complement one another and create a painful choice for your opponent. They have to break your board, but with a four guards and king sarcophagus on the field, it's a case of picking your poison. The only way you can deal with this is with cards like Book of Moon, Skill Drain, and Dark Ruler. But even then, you need to have the beat sticks to get around king sarcophagus in the battle phase. Lastly, having no reliance on the extra deck is super useful, but even then, you can get a bunch of generic cards in there, as beat sticks or tech plays or even just a cheeky Appaloosa when needed. I think the only thing I dislike about this deck is how simple it feels. 
I do wonder if this does make its way into the TCG meta, we'll see non-removing cards become more valuable, especially as this is just being used as an engine for things like Centurion and tier elements in the OCG. Overall, I love this deck. I love how different it feels, and I love the design of the cards as an Ancient Egypt stan, and again, I love decks that aren't just negate spam everything. Ahem, <coughs> not including all our generic negate cards. The new Horus support is really fun to play, and as I said with Red Dragon Archfiend, fun decks are sometimes better than meta decks designed just to win. Look out for more support in Phantom Nightmare for this deck to get really spicy. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit subscribe and drop a like for more deck previews and breakdowns. More Age of Overlord is coming for the next four weeks. Can you guess what's coming next? Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.